Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up this realistic room scene in Cinema 4D using Redshift and Grayscale Gorilla Plus for the materials, lights, and models. Now, don't worry, if you're not a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, you can still follow along to learn how to set up this type of scene. You just won't be able to use the exact materials, lights, and models that I end up using in this tutorial. And be sure to stick around until the end where I show you some of my favorite tips and tricks on how to make your render look more realistic. All right, with that, let's head on in to Cinema 4D and let's get started. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D and let's get started building this room. Let's first go into this menu here and grab a plane and let's go ahead and duplicate it. And this plane will be on the Z axis. So you could select this right here in your object menu. I'm now gonna just move it back and this will be our back wall of our room. You'll see we're gonna build a very simple setup, but it's really powerful as we add materials and lighting to all this. Next, let's grab a cube and this will be our little molding or little edge of the floor here, a little painted uh, bevel. All right, I'm just gonna drag this all the way out and I'm gonna add a little bit of bevel here by clicking this button in our cube. I'm gonna turn this uh, radius down and we could always adjust this later, but we're just setting up the basics. Okay, so we have our room. Next thing we need to do is start to set up our basic cameras and lighting so we could start to see what this looks like. Well, we're gonna be using Redshift for this tutorial. So I'm gonna use my Redshift layout. This is my startup layout. And if you wanna see how I build these layouts, we have a tutorial we'll link up that you could follow along and build your own custom layout. Now I use this layout because it has Redshift all ready to go. It's got some Grayscale Gorilla stuff, ready, uh, drop zone, all these tools, and of course the plus library. We're gonna be using a lot of stuff here from the library. And again, don't forget, if you're following along, you could still follow along with a ton of stuff if you're not a plus member. All right, so from here, let's go ahead and grab a camera. Uh, we need to turn on Redshift. We started doing that. Let's go into our render settings and under render, go to Redshift. Once we do that, this Redshift menu should pop up. If it doesn't pop up for you, make sure you go to Edit, Preferences, go to your renderer, Redshift, and click this button right here, Redshift Main Menu Checkbox. Make sure that's on. This menu will allow you to add cameras and lights and other good stuff. Let's go ahead and grab a standard camera. Go back to our view settings and turn on this camera. And the first thing we need to do is start to think like a cinematographer, start to think like a photographer in a studio. What type of lens do we need for this type of scene? Well, let's just start for now with a basic 50 millimeter. If you have our lens tools, you can just click 50. And if you don't, you can go into your uh, object here and adjust it right there. All right, now that we have a 50, let's start to build up the basic materials and lighting for the scene. You'll see if we uh, hit play on our Redshift, we got ugly lighting and no materials. And of course, lighting materials are two of the most important things other than geometry in your scene that you need to start to build beautiful renders. So let's go ahead and start to set some of this up. Well. Uh, we're gonna be using the wood floors here in the Grayscale Gorilla Plus library. I'm gonna scroll down and go to our wood volume one, and I'm using Redshift, so I'm gonna filter these by Redshift right here. And if you're using Octane, you can follow along with Octane or Arnold as well. Uh, I'm going to use, let's go with the oak, let's try oak wood planks, and I'm gonna, just gonna drag it out, literally drop it right on the scene right here. And uh, I want these planks to be facing this way. So uh, I'm going to rotate the plane. So let's grab our plane, rotate it by holding shift. I'm constraining it by five degrees and I rotated it 90 degrees. All right, now that we have that, let's go ahead and hit play. And we have our floor. Well things are still not looking great. And that's because we don't have any lighting in our scene. Well, so let's uh, set that up at the same time. So let's go to our Redshift menu, go to lights, go to dome light, and we're already looking better. Dome light is just a plain white light, but we could do better than that. We could add an HDRI. If you're not a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, you can click this button right here and choose an HDRI from your hard drive. If you're a Plus member, you can just drag texture onto drop zone 
and it will automatically add an HDRI to your scene and allow you to go into the library and literally click any of our HDRIs and instantly load them right in the scene. I'm gonna go with this Modern Industrial 2. I've been using this quite a lot and I always rotate it around so it's coming in from the left just to start. We'll adjust it as we go. So let's go to our coordinates and let's rotate this light around and we'll put it over on the side. Maybe even a little bit from the back. We're starting to get some nice reflections here, but we're gonna add more lights, don't you worry. Let's now add uh, some materials for the wall and start to set up our scene. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the Plus Library Materials. And for this uh, edge right here, this kind of like crown molding or whatever they call it, I'm gonna use uh, some painted wood material that we have that looks perfect for this. So I'm gonna go to our All tab and type in paint and wood. I think this should pop it up right there. Wood painted white, exactly what I want. So just drag this right onto the cube. And then one more material we need for the back wall. Um, we could use some drywall for now, but I think we might use something a little bit more fun as we get to the final render. So I'm gonna grab drywall. Let's just do a plain white drywall and uh, we'll mess around as we set this up. Okay. Uh, just like always, I'm always constantly jumping between lighting and materials and all this stuff. So uh, let, we also need an object to, to focus in on. Now for this render, uh, I ended up using one of our new everyday models. So if you have this models tab here, you can clear this out. You have a bunch of models in here. I love this molded fiberglass chair and it's exactly what we need to start to set our scene up. So using our 50 millimeter camera, I'm gonna to start to line up our, uh, our scene. And so you can see we're relatively close to the floor here. I'm gonna grab our fiberglass chair, grab our place tool and move it a little bit further off to the left. And I'm also going to grab this and rotate it around just so I could start to set up a little bit of angle here on the scene. Okay, we definitely need more light. So let's start to add in, um, first of all, a fill light for everything. So I'm gonna add another red shift dome light and that is the fill light we're looking for. It's a little bit too bright uh, and we might change the color as we go, but I'm just gonna go into object and turn down the exposure. Just get a little bit of fill light here in our scene and we'll play around with that a little bit later. Um, but the next thing I wanna add is a window light gobo that's really giving us a lot of detail, a lot of bounced light in this scene. So let me show you how to set that up. Let's go ahead into the Redshift menu and grab a spotlight. Now, this spotlight, we can grab our move tool. And in fact, let's just grab our spotlight, go to coordinates and move this out in Z so it's facing straight ahead. Now let's grab a null and put the spotlight in the null as a child. And now when we move the null around, if we go to our rotate tool, it will the spotlight will stay focused on the center of the scene here and it'll allow us to move it around and uh, just make sure that the spotlight is always focused on the middle of the scene. So we have the spotlight coming in from the, the uh, right side of the screen here but we don't have any of those nice uh, gobo reflections. Well, that's really simple. All you have to do is in your Redshift Spotlight, go to Object, and you have a texture uh, menu right here. Um, and we, of course, have all these gobos here that you could use to add effects right in the scene. So I'm just gonna drag one of these in the scene here. You could see we have this tree effect. And if I turn up our exposure, uh, you're gonna see it. whatever I drag into here, will automatically show in the background. We we have these still ones, so if we go to the windows, you could grab a window with like a tree coming in. Ah, oh, that looks awesome. All right, we need to scale this up. So scroll down and go to your cone angle and scale up that gobo, there you go. And just play around with some of these other gobos. You drag them in and you'll see instantly, uh, you'll get feedback right away in your scene. This one's cool with all the little lines in it. And uh, we even have animated ones. If you go to this animated gobos tab, you can drag in any one of these. I like these windows with trees in them. Get you some cool, this one has a little bit more light coming in. 
with little trees. This might be the one we want. Now we need to dial this in. So let's go to our cone angle and scale it up. And let's go to our null and position it exactly the way we want. So I just want it to feel like it's streaming in from the left. And I might want to move it up just to make sure this, this top doesn't show in the scene. So I could just move it up, move it up somewhere around here and maybe scale it up even more. Perfect. Now it's also angled a little bit. If you find that's happening, you can go to your null and you could just rotate around until it's straight. And this should be fine for now. The other thing I'm seeing is a lot of this uh, chair is being blocked off. Uh, we just happen to have like one of the beams of the window right there. So let's grab and move this. So we're dialing, uh, no, we wanna move it this way. I want to move it. Okay. There we go. Much better. Okay. So um, you see I bounce all, all around. Um, and this is just how I work. It's how I've always worked. And um, when I see light that needs to be adjusted, I ch change the light. When I see a texture that's bugging me, I change the texture. And that way, uh, I just kind of work all together. Lights and textures, they all combine together all the time. So if I see something that's bugging me, I'll just go down the rabbit hole and try to fix it. So where are we now? Well, we have some nice lighting. Uh, I do wanna make something a little bit more interesting on this back wall. And of course, we don't have any textures on our chair, so let's go ahead and solve that problem right now. Um, what are we gonna put in this chair? Well, we have some terrazzo uh, um, uh, things that, that look pretty good, uh, but I have a feeling this might be a little bit overkill for this scene. That's kinda cute. Uh, maybe the one that's less speckly. Um, I think we're gonna end up with just the plastic. Man, I love these orange plastics. Um, it's probably my most used material. All of these plastics look really great. So if I just type in plastic, uh, I know I want the orange one. We have multiple colors, but you know, my favorite color is orange. So we're just gonna do that one. Uh, this one's great, orange plastic scratched. I'm gonna drag this in here and see what this looks like. That is looking good. Now I don't want all the legs and all this other stuff to be um, uh, plastic. I want it to be wood and metal. So let's adjust that. Uh, I'm gonna drag this plastic down to the seat. And then we have a lot of metal parts that I could just put like a chrome on top of the whole chair. So I'm gonna type in chrome. And chrome silver I'm gonna put on the entire chair. And this way, all of these little screws and bolts and all this stuff just become chrome. Uh, and you could get into more detail if you're doing more close-ups, but this should be fine. And then for the legs, I want those to be wood. Uh, we have some great new unfinished woods here in our new uh, tactile collection. These look beautiful. So let's grab, I don't know, something light with a little texture. Birch, maybe? I'm going to go to uh, legs wood. There it is. And remember, everything else will be, um, will be chrome because we put that on the, on the null for the chair. Uh, so that looks good for now. We might be able to, we might need to adjust that as we go, but that's already giving us a ton of really cool feel. We got a nice rim light here from this HDRI. We have this nice window coming in. Um, and what else can we do? Well, I think from here, I'm going to, uh, let's add, let's add something to this chair and then we'll do some, some more tweaks to the scene. Uh, in our models, we also have this, uh, little throw pillow. So let's do that add a little bit more detail to the scene. I'm gonna grab it, and I think it needs to be shrunken down a little bit, so I'm gonna shrink it, and I'm gonna grab this place tool and see if I can't just find a cute little corner uh, in this chair for it to exist. That actually looks pretty good. We might be able to scale it up a little bit. Maybe it got more room than we thought. The place tool allows us to uh, place things without them touching, remember no touching. That is looking good. And then of course, I'm gonna use our pattern canvas materials. These have tons of cool patterns and all this fun stuff. Um, and don't worry, you could change the uh, colors 
if you uh, have your own colors or you have brand colors. I'm just going to throw this on the throw pillow, uh, no pun intended. And um, man, that looks good right out of the box. Okay, so what what are we missing? Well, I, I man, depending on your taste and your style and what you're going for, this is really, really close already. But I'm going to start to jump into some subtle tweaks that are, to me, very important in dialing in exactly the look you're going for. You're not going to see a drastic change from here to the final render, but these little tweaks, these little 5%, 10% things uh, add up and just add a little bit more detail, a little bit more texture, a little bit more feel to your scene. And it's always important uh, to go through some of these steps. So the first thing we're going to do is this floor looks good, but I want to add a little bit more of bump, a little bit more texture to this floor. It's a little flat for me. So let's uh, open this material up and I'll show you how to add a little bit of extra bump to your floor. Now, I'm going to save this as we go here, uh, just so uh, we have it. And this is chair in room two. All right, let's open up this material and let's see how we can add a little bit more bump in it. So I'm gonna go into our materials and double click this oak wood. It's gonna open up our shader graph. Now, um, if you're unfamiliar with nodes and shader graphs, don't be too intimidated. Start learning just a little bit at a time and you'll be just fine. Now this has all the materials and all the textures to create this wood floor here. And what we wanna do is in our bump uh, inputs, we wanna add a little bit more bump. So in this bump map, which I think this bump map is the general bump map, that one's fine. I think it's this one we wanna adjust. This is the cracks in between each of the planks. And right now it's set to a very low number. And you know, my, my construction's a lot crappier than most people, so I want more cracks in between <laughs> my planks. So I'm just gonna add more right here in the bump and it's starting to come through. I'm gonna add a little bit more. And there we go. So now you can see these little bumps are starting to pop up. I'm gonna make it really obvious because we're here on YouTube. You gotta crank things sometimes to really see it. I'm gonna go to four and then we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna, we're gonna look at the, uh, the result. See that crack there? That's what I'm talking about. So you, you can see we overdid it. That's way too much. But that is where you adjust the, the stuff. And this bump actually adjusts the rest, all this um, little subtle shading here. Uh, so let's go back. Let's go to something like 0.5. There we go. And let's zoom all the way back. Now, uh, we also don't have any depth of field. So we need to fix that. So how do we set that up? Well, inside of our camera, um, we can grab the optical tab. And this is the new Redshift camera, by the way. Uh, in the optical tab, you can come down here to aperture and you can set your aperture to what you would use in a room like this. If you've ever taken uh, a photo in a studio, you know, to, for more depth of field, you want to make this number go lower or use a lens that goes lower. So we could do something like two and you're gonna see right away, nothing happens. Why is that? Well, you have to turn on bokeh, this button right here. As soon as we turn on bokeh, you're gonna see the whole thing's blurry. Well, now we need to tell Redshift what we want to be in focus. And for that, I always use a focus null. Make a new null, type in focus, and I'm gonna put it by my camera. It's probably time we organize our scene. We could do that as well using folders, and maybe we'll do that in another tutorial. But in this focus null, you wanna drag it into the um, object right here. So you could drag this in, and you want to take your focus null and place it in your scene exactly what you want to be in focus. For me, it's like basically this pillow, like this chair and this pillow need to be absolutely in focus. So I'm gonna do my favorite trick, which is grab our place tool, make sure your focus null is selected, place null, place tool, and literally just drag in the scene where you want it to be in focus. Now that is in focus, the background's slightly blurry, and so is the foreground, just a little bit. So, all right. I told you we're making these subtle details, but they really help set the scene up. Okay, so now we have our depth of field. We're also, um, 
it's a little bit washed out. It's a little contrasty. Um, this is where I will reach for a LUT. So to set up a LUT in your scene, go ahead. If you don't see any uh, anything beyond this, hit this little arrow. It, and what you're looking for is this gear, okay? So if you already have the gear there, just click the gear. It's gonna open all of these settings. There's all this stuff in here, bloom and flares. All we're gonna use today is a LUT. So let's turn it on, let's open it up. And you can see there's nothing applied, no LUT file. Now we have LUTs here at Grayscale Gorilla. If you want really drastic effects or even subtle effects that give you beautiful curves, but there's one built into Redshift that I've been using a ton and it's right here. If you just click these three dots, you click this first menu here, this add Adon MQ LUTs, whatever that is. Uh, once you're in that menu, you're gonna see Advantix 200. Now, this is uh, a little cheat, a little tweak that Chad Ashley showed me that I've been using like crazy. And what this LUT does is it warms up the scene. So you can see if we go all the way back, I'm gonna try to make us a little bit more room here. There we go. Here's no LUT and here's all the way LUT. Hey, it's Nick here from the future. Uh, while I was recording this, I forgot to tell you to make sure to click this button right here. Apply color management before LUT. If you don't do that, you may end up with some wacky colors. Just a reminder, make sure you click this button before moving on. And you can see what it does. It gives a little bit of contrast and warms up uh, the entire scene. Now you don't have to crank it. You could even just use it very subtly. I'm gonna use it somewhere in the uh, 50, 60% range, but know that we always have this live. We could always come in here and tweak it as we go. But now we have a nice uh, warm filter. This works really well with warm colors, uh, things like wood and these oranges, it just really, really helps. All right, we're gonna do a few more things here. First one is maybe tone down this reflection a little bit on the left side of the chair. And that is in our original dome light. I'm just gonna dim it down just a bit. I don't want that reflection to be so strong. Maybe we just have to rotate it a little bit. That's actually nicer. I like it that it's following this edge and not blowing out the edge there. Maybe a little bit on that edge is, is fine, but not so much. I'm just dialing this in. That looks way better. And we also, because I toned it down, we lost a little bit of that fill. So let's go up into our fill. This is kind of a, a background light, a fill light. And remember, we set this up earlier with just literally a white light for fill. And we could turn this up. In fact, we could even tone this a little bit blue. Um, to offset some of this warmth, to, to kind of represent maybe a little of the skylight coming in. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna tweak this very, very subtly, make it a little bit blue, and then use this as our fill just for taste, just so the contrast. Remember, without it, too many shadows. With it, oh baby, here we go. Okay. Uh, let's, let's address this wall. This wall might be fine. It's out of the way. It's just plain white. It's white drywall material, but there might be some more fun textural things we could do back here. And I'll leave it up to you, uh, it, it, depending on where your scene is and if you want to follow along, but I'm just going to capture it because it's on my mind and, uh, it's, it's what we're doing here. So let's move this back over, give us a little bit more room. And what other materials will work good here? Well, here's one I've been using a lot for walls, and it's in the MSMC collection. If you go to MSMC, uh, of course, uh, use the render you're using. I'm gonna filter by Redshift. And you could scroll down to these concretes. Now, um, we have these great concrete walls, uh, and we have some really cool colors too, something like this uh, concrete pastel salmon color. I'm gonna drag this literally just on top of our plane. And once it updates, you're gonna see what we got. Okay, so let's uh, look at take a look at this. And of course, way too much orange. I mean, is there really such a thing as way too much orange? I think we may have found it, folks. There's too much orange here. So you could use all these other colors, but let's go ahead and just take the, the texture from this and tone it down. 
So how do we do that? Well, let's open up this material and let me show you how to remove some of this color here and give you the control over the color if you, if you wanna tweak it. So here we have our base texture. And if we open up um, the general tab, you see it's this salmon color. Well, we want to make it our color. How do we do that? Well, over here, you could type in ramp, pull out a ramp, and rather than plug this texture directly into your material, let's put it through a ramp first. So let's just drag the out color into the blue. Let's now drag this into the diffuse color. Pardon me, I'm on a Wacom tablet. Sometimes this takes a second. And once we do that, all of the color will be sucked out of this material. Now we just have a black and white version of what we had before. And I'm actually gonna take my focus tool and focus on the background just for a second. And this is gonna let us look at that material a little bit more closely. And uh, let's make sure this is on the wall, there we go. And we're, here's what we need to do. Um, here in the shader graph, you see we have this ramp. This ramp made this material black and white. And because it's in a gradient, we now have control over making this more contrasty or less. So right now, if we take this white point and we move it to the left, you can see the wall getting brighter, okay? And this is what we want. I, I didn't want it so dark. As we look at this, you can see we now have a very white wall and we have a little bit of texture happening here. If you wanna bring out more of that grungy texture, take the black point and move it up. And I'm gonna exaggerate this so we could really see it here uh, on YouTube with compression and all that stuff, but check that texture on the wall. I'm gonna move uh, away from my camera just for a second so we could look a little bit closer at this wall. But look at all this great texture we have back here. Very cool. Uh, even in the shadows, you're gonna see all this grunge stuff coming through. If I go back to my camera, you now can dial this into taste. So I want it not so bright, so let's make the white point a lot darker. And that grunge is great, I just want it a lot more subtle. So dial this in, let's wait for the light. There we go, there we go. And that is a little bit too grungy, so I'm just gonna pull that black point down. You could alternatively just make this not black, you can make this like a grayish color. And if you wanna, if you do wanna add a little color into your scene, you could just change your white point to whatever color you want. So, I don't know, let's try a blue. I don't think this will be that great, but let's go ahead and change it. That looks better than I thought it would. So, now we have a subtly blue texture here. This looks like a, like a kid's room or something like that. So let's grab our focus null. Let's grab our, uh, our place tool, and I'm gonna drag on that pillow again, and now, ba-bam, uh, sound effects are up to you. You have a scene. All right, as we wrap up, let's talk about the final animation, and this will look beautiful as a still, even if you just use it as a still. But let me also show you how to set this up for animation, especially if you're using these animated gobos. Well, in the spotlight, you remember we drug in, drug it, dragged in? Yeah, let's call it dragged in. This animated gobo from our collection right here. And to set up animation, all you have to do is open up this triangle, go to your animation tab, come down here, and under mode, you want to go to loop. All of these gobos, by the way, loop. Um, so they're seamless looping, we have caustics, we have all this stuff, even for these windows, they loop and they're beautiful. After you set it to loop, all you have to do is select detect frames, and it's gonna go grab all of the frames of animation and put them in your scene. And no matter how long your scene is, you now have loopable uh, animation gobo. So if we scrub through, you're gonna see this tree here. It's waving in the wind just a little bit. It's very subtle, this one, but trust me, there's animation going on. Uh, once you have that set up, you just need to check your render settings. So go to your output. Uh, this one, I wanna make sure uh, we're making this a high definition. So let's go uh, 1920 by uh, 10, 
80. I don't know the last time I said high definition all the way through as one full word. You can do this as a 4K, whatever you're exporting. Check your frame rate, whatever you want. Uh, make sure you select all frames. And then in your Redshift settings, uh, I love um, starting low and then moving up as we need less grain. So if you're just going to lunch, you know, maybe you start low, you get a basic setup and then crank this up for the final render. Um, and if you're not confident where to start, just try medium. It's a great preset and uh, it shouldn't take super long depending on your video card and of course a bunch of other stuff. But that is a good setup for your uh, re render. Go ahead and hit shift R and it will uh, ask you if you wanna save it. <laughs> so make sure you go here, specify where you wanna save it, and then you should be all set for your final render. Thanks again for watching everybody. And if you made it this far and you're not yet a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, consider clicking the button down below and learning more about how we help you make better looking renders in less time. You'll get instant access to the highest quality materials, lighting, and more to help you make better renders. It's what we do here. So click the link down below to learn more. And with that, I'd like to thank you for watching and we will see you in another video really soon. Bye everyone.